I just came across an article by Realtor.com that talked about the 10 most affordable cities in the United States. We're going to be taking a closer look at these cities and see if they're like viable cities that people want to live in. Is there actually jobs there? And we're going to be taking a look closer look at the houses that they consider affordable because I know that's what most people want to look at. I mean, is the house even nice enough that you would want to live there? I get it. What drew me to even make this video in the first place is just a couple years ago, I was showing this house right here. And then today I showed it again. When I showed it several years ago, it was only $145,000. Today that same house is now listed for $220,000. I used to consider my town pretty affordable and now I couldn't even afford the house I currently live in if I was trying to buy it today. And I know a lot of other people are facing the same situations. So let's get into some of these cities that are actually affordable. Actually affordable. Let's just start with the first one. This one's at the bottom of the list. This is number 10 at Topeka, Kansas. NAM, I'm not in Kansas anymore. So let's look at the houses that are available and I'd say if you had an income of, let's just say between 75 and $100,000, what could it possibly get you? According to all mortgage calculators, that is a house around 200 to $250,000. But I wanna get like really affordable. Let's try to see if we can find houses that are between 150 to 200,000 and what those actually look like. So right off the bat, look, as soon as we click on there, there's a house. $120,000. It's a three bedroom, one and a half bath. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the house I used to grow up in when I was little. It was built in 1974. The house I grew up in when I was built, it was 1972. So <laughs> I, hence the reason why it looked very similar to the one I grew up in. But they've updated and it looks really nice and it's only $120,000. It does have a one car garage and that could be kind of a stickler if you're only having like, if you have to drive through the snow, but let's see what else they got. Holy poop. <laughs> This house is only $50,000. I don't know what area it's in, but it, it was built in 1932. It's super freaking cute. I would say this is almost like a craftsman style home. For $50,000, it it's 864 square feet. But if it was just you by yourself for $50,000, that's a heck of a lot cheaper than paying for rent. Not only that, you could save that house for a while, you know, save a good down payment for a house in the future, then say, then keep that house and use that as a rental property. Then you're really building up your own generational wealth for yourself. And especially if people are working from home more often, maybe these more affordable places is the way to be thinking about this. Can't get over how inexpensive Topeka, Kansas is. Look at this one. This one just went on the market. It's a three bedroom, one bath. It's 1,400 square feet. My first house was only 1,500 square feet and we did just fine with two kids. It was built in 1952 and it looks like they have done some remodeling but again you could keep this as a rental property for the future you could save so much money if you were earning a hundred thousand dollars a year on a house that with a house note this cheap a house note for this would be like well let's figure it out uh, well, let's figure out a house note for 149 thousand granted this is give or take because if you have debt to income ratio and how much the interest rates would change but let's take a look at that mortgage calculator because you need closing costs we'll just make it a, even 150. One, two, three. All right, 30 year fixed at 4.64 interest rate is your mortgage payment $773. $773. You cannot get rent for $773. So that, just think about that. You can save so much money for a down payment on a newer home later on while living in this house and you're not paying it to a landlord. Well, this is something to think about, especially if you can do remote work. Now this next area I have high hopes for because I used to live in Georgia and this is in Macon, Georgia. And I remember going through Macon, Georgia and I did some stuff in high school being in Macon, Georgia and I always liked that area. So let's hope, let's just hope that the houses are really cute because there's so much to do around there and the weather's really nice and we'll do newest listings all right we got this one right here oh my gosh this is so cute <laughs> look right here hundred and eighty five thousand dollars it's a four bedroom three baths the lot size is eight thousand seven hundred and twelve square feet it was built in 1900 it does really have that kind of like older craftsman style which i think is super cute to me, this is Americana right here. And like I said earlier, the weather in Macon, Georgia is really nice. Oh, and they've updated it. This is extremely charming. Look at the front porch. Like who can't imagine drinking some sweet tea on the front porch there and watching the kids like ride their bicycles in the front yard. Look at the doors. Look at the trim work on the doors. They don't do that kind of stuff anymore. This is adorable. Back yard needs a little bit of work. But even still, this is not bad. It's under $200,000 and it has a decent sized yard. All right, let's go look at another one. 
let's go like really cheap let's just see um let's like let's go the lowest i want to see what the the cheapest well they got some i got some stuff that's that needs a little work but if you're an investor this is really smart because you could buy these and fix them up and then rent them out but some of them may be more worth and worth it for nineteen thousand nine hundred dollars you could totally like fix this up it has a lot of charm to it but it's kind of giving me the thing of nightmares so i could be wrong about that this house right here it's under contract right now but it's only thirty four thousand nine hundred this could really work i will say this though if you're getting a um, mortgage this could be a problem because a lot of lenders won't do a mortgage for under sixty five thousand doesn't mean that you can't get one it's just gonna be hard for you to find a lender that will get you a mortgage for under sixty five thousand dollars and you can possibly do that but i have yet to have found a lender that does loans for under sixty five thousand so just fyi if you were thinking about doing a loan let's jump ahead and let's look at some that are this little house right here, $50,000. Look, it was pending. It's already pending. Three bedroom, one bath for 50,000. And it's 756 square feet, which is bigger than a tiny home. You're also gonna have trouble if you're finding some of these houses that are a little less expensive that are under 600 square feet to find financing. A lot of lenders will not finance houses that are under 600 square feet. So that's another thing to think about when you're looking at some of these remote areas that are still in good cities, they just happen to have a lot more affordable housing, which seems to be the rarest thing in the, to find in the United States right now. One last one, but this is in Warner Robins, which is really close to Macon. But look, $54,000. It's 1,940 square feet. It was built in 1942. It was only in the market for 33 days. But that is a super cute home. So you can find some nice little houses in decent cities across the United States. Do you know where we're going to next? You'll never guess. We're going to Ithaca. We're going to Ithaca, New York. That was my attempt at a New York accent. You can bust me in the comment section. Dude, right off the bat, look at this. I mean, granted it's under contract, but this one was $138,030. I don't know how they came up with an extra 30 bucks. <laughs> that was a weird price, but this is nice. And it was built in 2017. It's practically a brand new house. Holy cow, look at this one. This is beautiful. This is a three bedroom, one bath, 1998 square feet. It's been on the market for a long time, 111 days. That's unusual. It has a three car garage. And it has an extra storage area. This is cute. Underground Railroad, home of the Hannah Wilcox and wife Nancy Ann Price, who sheltered and assisted fugitive slaves on their way to Canada. Is it on this property? This is a historic property. Oh, hook me up. I'm on it. Oh, I love this kind of stuff. It looks like they kind of updated the kitchen since they probably purchased this in 1850 because I can't imagine in 1850 they did the cabinets like this. And it's got history. Oh, look, kids. That's a phone. This is how we used to make phone calls. <laughs> Let's check out one more in Ithaca. All right, this one's on the upper end, but it's $250,000. It was built in 1925. It's 2,216 square feet. You can get yourself a lot of house here in Ithaca, New York, if you want to become a New Yorker. Before we jump into the next city, I do want to say, and it's probably going to be strange hearing this from a real estate agent, even if you think that you need to have a house right now, if you are not ready to own a house, if you do not have like reserved money in the background waiting for you for emergencies, if you feel like you're in a lot of debt and you're having trouble paying your bills now, just because the homes that I'm showing you are around 50, 60, even $100,000, doesn't mean that you necessarily should be buying a home right now. Always check with your local lenders, have them approve you for a loan to find out what your DTI is, what your debt to income is because you might think that you could afford some of these houses but when you add in the taxes and the insurance don't get your hopes up ahead of time until you've been pre-approved by your local lenders now let's go to charleston west virginia west virginia i don't know if i'm gonna get in trouble for singing the song i'm not gonna sing the song but you know what song i'm thinking of i don't know much about charleston west virginia i've never been there never driven through there i think i've been to west virginia like one time in my life but apparently they have some super cute affordable homes so let's take a look see look right here right off the bat one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, way under our budget it's a three bedroom two bath it was built in 1960 it's a brick exterior let's take a look see inside the it's been brought up to date. It's got some nice cool gray colors. It looks like it has newer carpeting. The house is super cute, but can we talk about the photographs just, just for a moment? 
just let me know. Do you believe that these kind of photographs that have the, the fisheye lens, don't you think they distort the image of the house itself? Maybe I'm crazy, but to me, it makes it look like the walls are like impregnated. Now I grant it, I know it's a lens of a camera. Don't, don't get at me at the comments. Just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right, that's for 160,000. So let's look at another one. Let's, this one, it's under contract, but it's $75,000. It's a two bedroom, one bath, and it's 900 square feet, so it would qualify for a loan because it's over the 600 square feet. See, this is what I'm talking about, about affordable housing options. If we had more of these type of homes throughout the country, we have a lot less people trying to find their first starter home. There's so many people that want that. I just recently though saw a clip that was saying that millennials don't want starter homes, they want bigger homes that they could grow into. The millennials now are thinking, what, I, what do I need now and what might I need down the line? And they can actually afford to do this because of a combination of a couple of different things, low down payments, low interest rates and buckets of money. Keep in mind that a lot of the millennials, young adults, they moved in with their parents during the pandemic. Um, I'm not a millennial. If you are a millennial, is this a real thing? And if you are a millennial, would you want a house like this, like a little small house that you could own yourself and like basically have the cheapest mortgage payment on the planet? I don't know if it was me, that's what I would want if my first house. I'm a little shocked by this list because I thought there would be a lot more Southern states that would be at the top 10, but it seems like there's a lot of Northern ones like this one in Erie, Pennsylvania. This is our next one. Look at the houses here. This one is $147,500. It's only been on the market for one day. It is a one car garage, but if you were buying it by yourself, you could totally pull this off with $100,000 if you didn't have a lot of debt to income ratio, that DTI that we were talking about earlier. It was built in 1940 and let's take a closer look at some pictures. It looks extremely well maintained. It's a wicked cute. Oh, it even has like a little sunroom. Do they call it a sunroom in Pennsylvania? We call them a sunroom here in the South. I know that everybody's got a different name for things in different regions. My brother would say this is totes my goats. Very classic, traditional home, craftsman style home. It is beautiful, it's stunning. Look at the built-ins. It's got built-in storage. You don't get built-in storage hardly at all anymore. As you're looking at any of these houses, just know, just know that always have a home inspection. Even though you've gone through the house and it looks like it's super well maintained and they've taken really good care of it over the years, always hire a home inspector. It's like $500 a piece of mind. Go ahead and do it. You'll never regret it. Let's go to see if there's ones that's closer to our uh, high end, like in the 200s. Let's take a look see. Look see, look see. This looks on, this one looks a little bit newer. This is a three bedroom, one and a half bath. It's 1,256 square feet and it's on an over half an acre, which I kind of like me some dirt. I like land around my houses. So this is a good thing. It's like the typical ranch style home. It is like the garage is big. Is that carpet in the kitchen? With all the money that you're saving, if that is carpet in the kitchen, you can replace it. That is carpet. That has to be carpet. Maybe I'm wrong. Does that look like carpet to you? That looks like carpet to me. You can call whatever you want as affordable as these houses are. <laughs> it does need a little bit of updating. It needs a little, little updating, but it's not anything that can't be fixed in a, with a coat of paint and a little bit of love. And for that price point, your mortgage payments would be so inexpensive, you could totally pull it off. Is that a generator? <gasps> Heck yeah, it is. That's a whole house generator. They're kind of expensive to put in new, so it's kind of nice to buy a house that already has one. <laughs> no lie. It's kind of like swimming pools. All right, our next one is even further out of where I have no idea about, and I could be completely wrong. I know nothing about Davenport, Iowa. If anybody knows anything about, da wait a minute, we have Google. Let, let, hold on, let's see what the Google web say. Davenport is a city and a county seat of Scotts County, Iowa in the United States. It's located along the Mississippi River, along the eastern border of the state, and it is the largest of the Quad Cities. Well, let's look at the houses in Davenport. Let's, all right, we got this house right here. This is cute. Looks very traditional, like I would say, you know, Americana. It's a three bedroom, two bath. It's 1672 square foot. It was built in 1914. It's only been on the market for a couple days. Let's take a look. Oh, this is so nice. It's a lovely two story home. It has lots of space between the neighbors. This is like, this is really cute. Like the neighborhood looks really, really nice. Oh, look, see the beautiful front porch, but look how they have it decorated. They left the nice old wallpaper there. I know that some of you probably hate that wallpaper. I personally love it, but that kitchen has been remodeled. <laughs> 
It was probably remodeled in the 80s because everybody that I knew in the 80s that got a brand new house had a kitchen that looked just like this with those cabinets. <laughs> those are very 80s. But look at all those wood encasements around all the doorways and look at the ones around the windows. That is breathtaking and stunning. Now, if you are buying an older home and you're a little concerned about like the components in the house, because it's a seller's market, there isn't many people that are doing a lot of repairs. You can always get yourself a home warranty. Now, some people will, and I know that the comment section will be riddled with this, is that they'll say home warranty companies are a waste but there are plenty of home warranty companies that are not a waste. So ask your real, local real estate agent what they recommend as a good home warranty company. So keep that in mind. All right, this one's on the high end, but I like it. Like, look at this. This one is $239,000. It has a nice sidewalk on the front. Let's take a look inside. These people really have taken care of this, this house a lot. And they've kept all that original woodwork. This is so cute. Do you love it? I love it. That wood encasing, like these older homes, I mean, they really have it going on. They don't do it like this anymore. You see brand new houses, you just don't see them like with that wood casing unless you're really, really high dollar. So if you're willing to step out of your comfort zone and get into some place that you've never been before, which is like a brand new adventure, you can move to Davenport and get yourself a beautiful craftsman style house. I'm all, I'm all for it. <laughs> are, any, are you liking any of these? Let me know. Are you liking any of these areas? Are you thinking a little bit differently? Is this something you would kind of consider? All right, we have another city that is not in the South. It's Ohio, Youngstown, Ohio. Let's take a look, see, and see what they have as far as homes are concerned. All right, right off the bat, we got a house that's 69,000. We got this house right here, 139,000. It's super cute. This one is kind of a little bit closer to the higher end of our price range, which we said around 200,000. So let's take a look, see at this one. This one's $169,900. It's over 2,000 square feet. It's on a quarter acre lot. It was built in 1963. It has a beautiful yard, but this gives you plenty of space if you're planning on working from home. Okay, that's Youngsville, Ohio. Let's go ahead and take a look at another house from there. This one caught my eye. This one was 179,000. I'm gonna guess the year it was built before I click on it. I'm gonna say 1983, 1983, 1983. I could be completely wrong. Oh, I was so wrong. <laughs> Beautiful yard. This reminds me a lot of like houses in New England, that Cape Cod kind of look. Let's take a look at the inside. I love the yard. This is adorable. It has a sunroom or a solarium, bricked porch area, huge backyard, lovely woodwork, millwork throughout the house. This is adorbs. Oh, you see this bathroom? I want to point this out really quick. So when I was buying my first house, if you saw a bathroom like this, everybody my age, those Gen Xers would have ripped the heck out of this thing and, and moderned it. But now everybody that I run to that is millennials now, they're like, I love the original tile and they refurbish it and they keep that green tile. And you're gonna be seeing a lot more of that coming up. I wonder if it's gonna make a like a full return. Remember the green and pink bathtubs that we had when we were younger? <laughs> I wonder if it will, it will make a whole statement again because everything that's old is new again, you know, as they say. All right, let's pick another house. It's 130,000. It's a four bedroom, two bath. It's 1736 square feet. That is plenty of room. It's very, it kind of almost has like a schoolhouse look to it. It's very cute. I bet that thing is gonna be long standing way after I'm dead. But they've taken really great care of this house and it looks like they have updated it very nicely. If you're wanting to start a new adventure in a whole different state that you never heard of, like I have never heard of Youngsville, Iowa. <laughs> Like, take a venture. Hey, I could even hook you up with a real estate agent out there. Just go to my website, christinasmallhorn.com, and fill out the referral form, and I'll get you connected with her. Now we're rolling into our top three that they say is the most affordable cities in the United States. And again, this one is up north. Who knew that the north had so many affordable houses? And this one is in Saginaw, Michigan? I'm Saginaw, Michigan. I hope I'm not saying that wrong because I know I'll get slammed. That's not Saginaw. She's saying it wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm just listening. So let's just take a look at the houses. Right off the top, this one is $79,000. It's a two bedroom, one bath. It's 1,036 square feet. It's on a quarter of an acre. Let's find something a little bit newer. Why would this one be 209,000? What makes this one so, so special? Oh, it's on 2.29 acres. This one was built in 1968. It's a two bedroom, one bath, 1,315 square feet. But if you want a lot of dirt, this one comes with a lot of dirt. That'd be a great place to put a swimming pool. Oh. Look at that. That's a lot of dirt and a lot of mowing. Just think about that ahead of time. It'd be a good excuse to buy a really big tractor and sit out there and drive it. I mean, you're going to have to deal with snow. So just, you know, 
they just it's something to think about is all I'm getting at. All right, so that was Michigan. Let's get into number two. All right, here's the next one. Terry Hot, Indiana. Is it Terry Hoot? Terry Hot? Terry Hoot? Terry... I don't know. All right, we're going to be looking to see what we got here. We got houses that are 160,000. This one's a little bit older. It just entered the market. Let's hit it. Let's see what it's got. Oh, that is adorbs. Now this house reminds me of the Tequila Mockingbird house from the old Gregory Peck movies. Do you remember that? It has a nice two car garage. We got some beautiful millwork in here and some fireplaces that are super cute. I wonder if they're functional. You know, a lot of these old homes, just, just for you to know, the, they'll have the fireplaces there, but they're no longer functional. Whether they weren't maintained over years or they sealed them up, a lot of them are just for looks. I want something newer. All right, this one is 182500 It is It is been on the market. Oh, see, it is newer. This one's been on the market for five days. It was built in 1990 as a one-car garage, and I would consider this to be a ranch-style home. Oh, the kitchen's not finished. Let's find out a little bit more about this house because it definitely has brand new windows going on here. Maybe this is a flip that they're working on. It's uh, property details. Let's hit it. New, new, new. Here's your opportunity to be the first owner of a remodeled home on the east side. From the roof to the electricity to the plumbing as well as the HVAC. Great open concept living room, dining room area with new kitchen floors. If this is a flip home, th this is when I highly encourage you again to hire a home inspector. Even if you're a contractor, even if you think that you know everything about houses, I want you to find out exactly who put in that new roof. Make sure you get the names and numbers of everybody who did the work inside the house. Because if there's any problems with it, some of those things might be warranted. The hot water heater, the roof, all of those things. You want to have the contractor's name, all the warranties that came with all the new appliances. Make sure you have all of those with you so that way when you're purchasing your house, those warranties will follow you and, and not the previous people that own the house. All right, our next city I'm very familiar with because I had a boyfriend that was from here. I don't attribute the city of Peoria of creating jerk boyfriends, but they do have some good affordable homes. So let's take a look and see what they got. Hopefully they have something a little bit newer. I'm kind of like, as much as I love looking at old houses, I want to see something a little bit more new. Let's see what they got. All right, the first one right off the bat, this one was $199,000. That's for sale. It's on the upper end of our budget. It's three bedrooms, two baths. Let's see when it was built. 1967. That's not too old. Here we go. All right, we got picture one. It's a typical ranch. Nice big tree in the front. Do you know what big trees are? Big roots. And if you have a big storm that comes through, big roots from big trees pull up foundations, just FYI. I don't know if they have that so much of a problem in Peoria, Illinois, but I can tell you that is a problem here in the state of Louisiana. All right, let's see what else they got. Peoria. Look at this house right here. I have to show you this one and it's, it's under contract and everything, but I have to show you because this house looks identical to the house I grew up in as a kid. And I just think it's great. I have to know my house was built in 1973. Two. And this one, this house is built in 1964. So that must've been like a style back then. Oh, this is a steal right here. Look at this one. It looks fairly new. It's 148,500. Oh, it was built in 1939. Why did I think this looked new? Because they've maintained it. Looks like it's got a new roof on it. That's for sure. This would be a great starter home. Or even... Ooh, it's one story. This would even be uh, not even just a great starter home. This would be a great retirement home. Either your good first home or your good last home. Man, they got some really good steals in here. There's one for $18,900. Here's another one for $40,000. And I guess that's why that Realtor.com named it the number one most affordable city in the United States is Peoria, Illinois. So, uh, and it looks like they weren't lying. They've got a lot of houses there for sale. It doesn't look like there's a bunch of investors that are purchasing them. It's something to look at if you don't mind the cold. I think the most surprising thing for me when looking at all these houses in the most affordable areas in the United States, I had always been told that the South was the most affordable. But it seems like all of these cities that Realtor.com listed were mostly up north. Big shocker to me. So now that we've taken a closer look at these 10 most affordable cities, are any of these cities a viable option for you? Let me know in the comment section below. To watch more videos about buying homes, go ahead and click these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters. And yes, I shaved the side of my head.